I want to take you through the process that I walk my clients through when we are delivering that service. And so this is a scenario. I find a client and they're like, hey, Miriam, uh, I need your help. I have uh, this plot somewhere and I want to do, um, I want to build. I want to invest some money that I have and I want to build. And then I'm like, what, what, what do you want to build? What's, what are you, what's in your mind? And it'll be like, no. I even have a plan. I have done a, an architectural plan, structural plans. I have them here. They are see what I'm doing. And then, then I see that the client or the investor wants to do uh, a five-story building or a four-story building. They want to have bed sitters, one bedroom, and a few two bedrooms. That's the most the suitable uh, situation in that specific location. And I'm like, awesome. And then they're going to ask me, so Miriam, I need an animal license. I hear I need an animal license. How does it go about? How do I acquire my license? And this is what I usually tell them. Awesome. The first thing that you've done is reaching out. Well done. The, the other thing that you need to do is to understand the process of an environmental impact assessment because that is the service that I'm going to offer you. I'm going to make sure you get your NEMA license. And how do I make sure that happens? It is by conducting an environmental impact assessment for your project site. That is my job as a consultant. That is what we do as a company. We provide environmental impact assessments so that my, our clients can be able to have uh, or acquire their NEMA licenses so that they can go ahead and start their project. So what usually happens is that we go to site. I always prefer to go to site and see what exactly is happening. From the site, I can be able to, ask, to assess what exactly could be an issue. Just me being there, I'll be able to see and tell several things I could pick, several data, data sets from the site. And then I see the documents, the plans, the title deed, the lease agreements, all those documents that you have concerning that specific project. The other thing that I want to do, or I want to you to understand is that public participation must be done for your project. And let me repeat there, public participation must be done for your project. So yes, we have gone to site, I've seen your document, and by the time we are doing all these, we have already agreed on the pricing, on the payment plan, and all those documents are signed and we're good. So we're already doing the job. And the first thing that we need to do is to go to site and then I see the documents, and then we plan for a public participation uh, activity. It could either be a baraza, we could do a baraza, we could do a home to home uh, public participation, filling in the questionnaires. We form a way or we agree on how we are going to involve your neighbors in the project. And this is because it has been provided as a requirement. There is no ever, let nobody tell you that can be able to access or have an EMA license without public participation does not happen. Every project must go through the process of public participation. And in this case, depending on the nature, on the risk of the project, if your project is categorized as high risk, then the, you know, the level of public participation is different. So we have a plan of how we are going to do that depending on the nature of your project and we actually do the public participation. And then after that, now I sit down and compile a report of all these uh, findings from the, the feedback I get from the public, from the feedback I get from the lead agencies or the stakeholders, from the documentation that I have, from the plan, from the site visit, from the data that I get from the desktop study activities. I sit down and do a report. In my report, I'm describing the project. I'm describing the project site that is going to house the project. Um, I have also identified the risk that could be posed to the environment by your project. For example, you want to do a five-story building. There's a lot of waste that is going to come from that building, both solid waste and and, uh, and liquid or water waste, efferent discharge. You know. So how are you going to manage your 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 sewer? That's a risk to the environment. So such risk, you identify them. And then after I identify them, I make sure every risk I identify, I recommend mitigation measures. Yes. All right. Maybe you want to do a septic tank. Is it, is the swell compatible with the, with the septic tank that you want to do? Maybe the swell type, the, the, it's called the, the rate or the type of soil, the structure of the soil cannot allow you 
to use a septic tank so you have to invest in another plant or another method of treating your waste so such things we find a mitigation measure for every impact that we identify and develop a plan that your construction guys are supposed to follow a plan for construction phase operational phase and even when you decommission the project so that one should be followed by your engineers by your architects by your contractors who are going to be constructing the project so make sure to have a report a copy of the report on site and let them at least go through the report and have an idea of what nema has recommended and then after it is done i do the, the submission of the report these days we do online submission as well as physical submission. So we submit online on NEMA website. We also take the hard copies to the offices and we give them time to review. Depending again on the nature of the project, high risk, medium or low, it takes several, it takes the period of licensing is different. So there are those that could be licensed within five working days. There are those that take 21. There are those who take 90 days. So it depends on the nature and the risk that the nature, the level of your project. So assuming it's a 21 day project, so we wait for about 14 days and then we follow up on your project. Okay. I don't want to over promise. So let me say 14 days, we follow up on your project. So we have, uh, we have feedback. Is your project approved? Or do we have issues that we need to address? Maybe Nema is not satisfied by the by 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 the, by the there are things that are not following up. For example, the project owner and the title leads and the plans, such things. Eh? Or Nema has decided that uh, there has been issues with septic tanks in that specific area, and you want to do a septic tank for your building. So Nema feels that is not a viable solution a viable option and so they have decided that they cannot license that project until you do soil test for that specific site you know so these are issues that could be raised by nema and we have to address them nema could not be satisfied by you using a septic tank and might demand a hydrological report so we go back and do a hydrological report to see what the hydrological survey of the area says and after you address such issues, they don't always rise, but if they rise, they have to be addressed. After they are addressed, then of course you get your license. Let me show you one. So if you if your project doesn't have issues or you, you have addressed any issues that is raised, then you get yourself a NEMA license. This is a license for one of my clients. So you get yourself a NEMA license. This is a, for, for a construction building. The client is yet to collect this one. So this is, a, is, is the license that you get from NEMA after you've done with your project. This is for a medium risk project. It could look a different project if your project is a, is a low risk project. It, the license could be of a different color, but, but this is the design of the project, right? Now, behind the license, we have conditions. Conditions that we have been given by NEMA that you're supposed to look at while you're implementing your project. For example, it says general conditions. We have construction conditions and we even have operational conditions and we have conditions for uh, notification conditions in case anything changes and we have the commissioning uh, conditions when the project life cycle of the project is done. General conditions, one, the license should be valid for 24 months uh, from the date of issue, you see. Then also, we told the proponent shall comply with NEMA's improvement orders throughout the project cycle such. For example, during construction, you are told the proponent shall ensure strict adherence to the Occupational Safety and Health Act, and it is named there. So, the proponent shall ensure that all excavation, all excavated, all demolished material and debris is collected, reused, and where need be disposed of as per the Environmental Management and Coordination Act, Waste Management Regulation. So those are the conditions that you have. One of the operational conditions you have is um, 
The proponent shall ensure that all wastewater from the complete premises is disposed of as per the standards set out in the Environment Management and Coordination Water Regulation, uh, Water Quality Regulation of 2006. We also have, um, for example, um, the proponent shall seek written approval from the authority for any operational changes under the license. The proponent shall keep records of all no pollution incidents and notify the authority within 24. So such are the conditions that you're given, okay? And now if you have your, if you have your, your license with you, now you can go ahead and implement your project. Again, depending on the type of your project, that is why I keep saying keep consulting with your expert you might need to do monitoring this for residential building so you find during their operation i don't know if they have been told to do environmental audits some of them will demand that you have an annual environmental audit done for your facility and this is because uh probably now assuming you're doing a crusher or a petrol station that will demand that you do environmental audits and you seek other licenses so such conditions will be provided for in the license conditions so after you have your license awesome go ahead and implement your project but as you implement your project keep an eye on the conditions okay and after your operational your crusher is now working make sure to go back and see were you told to conduct environmental audits or are you supposed to conduct environmental audits? And that is where we called it come in. Just book a call, make sure to contact us. We go through your business and we will tell you all the licenses, all the permits, or even audits that you might require if you're already operational and you're not sure if you need any of them. Because if never catches up with you, they're going to penalize you. They're going to harass you people. We want you to do business with peace of mind because after all, business is the only way that we would run away from poverty. Look at our country. People are unemployed. We want your business to prosper so that it can employ the youth. The youth can benefit, raise families that are better, educate their children. And with time, we can be able to get out of this poverty, poverty thing. If we get out of poverty thing, we shall be able to conserve the environment even more. That is how we want to go. So and eradicate poverty by making sure your business is working. Make sure your business is working the right way. Make sure you're not harassed. Make sure that your business is compliant because we do not want you to lose money in penalties, money in courts. We don't want you to go through the stress. You know, peace of mind is what you need for you to be able to grow your business. And that is where Ecolid come in to make sure that your business is in line with the environmental laws and regulations and any other regulation that you might need for your business. So I hope that helps. I hope that has helped many of you. And thank you very much for listening to this episode. I'll see you in the next one. But till next time, leave any question you have uh, down in the comment section. I'll see it. I'll answer it. And make sure to download our newsletter. It's still circulating every week. We send you a, a quote. We send you some document. We send you some value additional content uh, through your email. So give us your email so we can be able to send you these newsletters every week. So till next time. May the Lord God bless you. Bye-bye. I call it. Very